So we've been building up our little web application, our little ASP.NET Core application, but we've just got the one project. It's not a complicated solution with lots of moving parts. No, nope. it's pretty basic, very simple. You see things on the screen. We know how environments work. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that we wanted to point out is that when you go into that project.json, or if we look here into references, we've referred to NuGet a couple of times. And while we're not going to dig deep, deep into NuGet until the intermediate course, it's worth pointing out that these packages here are libraries that other people have written that we've brought in, we've downloaded them right over the net. So does that mean that I can write a library if I wanted to? Exactly. So let's write a library, put it in there, and see if it looks any different. That's OK. Let's give it a try. OK. So we're in Visual Studio here. Of course, you could do this from the command line. You could say .NET new dash T for type and say lib for library. But we're going to right click and say add new project. And we're going to pick .NET Core class library. OK. And we will make the Maria lib or lib. OK. And you'll notice over here, see it says restoring. It just happened for a moment there. Yeah. It's quite quick. So, so it was restoring packages for this particular library? Right, exactly. So we went .NET new by saying file new project. .NET restore was implied. And it all happened within the moment that we pushed OK. So when we when you said .NET new, did we say .NET new or .NET new dash T lib? That's a good question. So right now, in the, at the, as of the time of this recording, Visual Studio makes slightly different projects than what you get from .NET new. But it is the goal, when all of this gets completely finished and baked, that when you say file new project in Visual Studio, it'll be the exact same thing that you would get if you did it from the command line or from any other tools. So a library is a library is a library. Library. OK. okay? Good question. But if we look over here, though, we can see a couple of things. Notice that this web app has one icon. And it says .NET Core App. Yes. Well, this one has .NET Standard, and it has a different icon. So what's going on here? So from what I see, it's probably indicating that it's two different things. So this is a standard library, perhaps? Exactly. Because the icon is similar to the icon of the library we've just created. Right. And another way to look at it is, this web application can be executed. It has an entry point. It has a place to jump in and run. It has a main. Yes, it has. Right? And if we actually go and look at that, remember, we wrote that main. We wrote so loud. Yeah. So that public main is where the thing enters. When you say .NET run. This is what is executed. Exactly. But our library is the .NET library, and we could maybe use it other places. So um, I could build a library that did calculations for me. Mm -hmm. And use it in? Multiple different projects. Could be a console app, or it could be in any way. And then in the, in the goal here is, is reuse, right? I want to be able to write a great library and use it on an iPhone and use it on the web. So if I had, if you were building the web application and I was building the Xamarin application, mm -hmm. we would have somebody else who would build the library. Would we be working at three different places? Um, that's a good point. So in this particular case, if we open up project.json, we can see that this is just a standard library. It has no entry point, and there's no main. There's no way to run this. I can't .NET run this library. It's just to be used as a collection of functions and methods and objects in other locations. So here we're introducing the concept of being able to reuse things as much as possible. Exactly. And you can imagine, as I go and collapse all of these different projects, that I could have dozens of reusable libraries. And even more, we're going to write uh, Maria Lib, and then potentially publish it on the internet, and other people could bring it down. Oh, and use it as they would like. Exactly. So just to go back, when you have this source file where mm -hmm. the library lives, as well as our application, correct? Ah, uh, that's a good point. So this folder here called source, src. What we can actually do is I'm going to right click on the solution and say open folder in File Explorer, and you see that there's this folder called src. We didn't see this before when we had a single project, with a single project per folder. But look, we've got projects here. There's our web app, and there's the one that we just made. So how does it know about SRC? There's a thing called a global.json. When you have a multi-project solution, and it indicates the names of the folders to search 
or project. Okay. Okay. Now, right now, you see that it says test. We don't have a test. But if I was trying to test a new feature, I could put it in a test folder? You could make a test folder, make a project, and it could be a test that could be run exactly right. So this is how it knows about SRC. Okay? So let's put something silly here uh, for class one. We're going to make a uh, public st static uh, returns a string. We'll call it greeting. Pretty sophisticated, complicated stuff. It should be patented immediately. Immediately. You yes. make millions. Millions. So here it's called class one. Very creative. Yeah. So we've got class one. The method is called greeting. It's inside of Maria Lib. And let's go into program. Uh, not program, pardon me, startup. And if we were going to call, let me do a little bit of cleanup here. One second. If we were going to call that from right async, right here we would say like hello, right? Yep. And that compiles just fine. Maria was called Maria Lib. Notice how I'm not getting IntelliSense. No, you're not getting any IntelliSense at all. Okay. Doesn't know about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a reference to this library from this from application. So you're going to add a reference right here. Okay. This is a solution reference, not a NuGet. Oh, okay. So there are two different ways to add your references. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing because when you hit OK, watch what happens. You're there, but it's not using, this is the icon for a NuGet. You're a, what they call a project reference, and this is a package reference. But it's effectively the same thing because if we look inside of Project JSON. Oh, there it is. It doesn't know that Maria didn't come from NuGet. So what do you think it's doing? Is it searching or where is it looking for these things? So is it going to first search online? So if you hover over it, what does it show us? It just says Maria. But if we look at one of these. It should, plus the location. It so, knows about where it came from. So it's reaching out online mm -hmm. and bringing it down? So there is an order of precedence. The first place it looks is local. It looks in the local folder, then it looks on the local machine, and then mm -hmm. it looks on the internet. And is that why there's kind of a weight when you ho hover over it? Exactly. So that's a good point. So if I hover over here, one, one thousand, two, one that boom. So this is another question. If I had no access to internet, uh, and it's sure. a great question. So right now, if the NuGet package, if the package for the library that you wanted was already in your cache, you could do this work on an airplane. Oh, so when I was working on some samples on the plane, and you see that tiny little folder mm -hmm. instead of the NuGet icon, is that where it's coming from? No, so there is a, there's a global cache that you can actually go and find. Remember at the very, very beginning of this whole talk, we went and we uh, uh, typed .NET, and it went and chewed for yep. a while, right? There's actually a global NuGet cache that we could go and dig up. Uh, I'd have to go and figure out where it is. Uh, but it's a big local cache of stuff. I try to remember where it was. And uh, if you're, here you go. See? Oh, and this is a cache of all. It's just, you know, you don't need to go and see all this, but you need to, you, it's good to know that it's here. It's a cache of files that are local. So it looks on your local machine before it goes up to the, to the net. Yeah. Okay. But it's important to point out that in this case, you are a project reference, and that's why you look different. But if you then decided to publish this to NuGet, you could delete that project. That icon would change into a NuGet. NuGet icon, yeah, okay. And you would come down from NuGet instead. All right. Okay. Let's actually see if this works. So let's say Maria Lib, class one, greeting. Run it. There you go. So the work happened in that lib. And here's one last thing that's worth pointing out, because at some point you're going to become a, a library publisher, right? You're going to be someone who makes these things. There's Maria lib in our command prompt there. I could go and say .NET run, right? What happens? I don't know what's going on. You can't run that. 
You may be trying to publish a library. Oh. .NET Pack. So that is, so what does .NET Pack do? Well, when you build something, it makes that binary file that says, here's the code. But what you want to do is encapsulate that into a zip file effectively, and a NuGet is a zip file. And I just went and made a, a new package. Um, and then has... David Fowler likes to call them nupkegs. I, I, that's a good one. I do not like that name. I, I, I think you should patent that. I think we're going to make that one happen. So yeah. that right there... Is a NuGet pack. So I can take this mm -hmm. and publish it. Right. So you could then go up to NuGet.org. And upload Sign it. in and then upload a package. If I had to, you know, I would have to go and sign in with my Microsoft account. Upload a package and it would become one of the tens of thousands of packages that can be downloaded and explored either here on the gallery or from the NuGet UI that we saw before here. Right click, manage NuGet packages. And you'll see right there, the package source, see? Where's the package source? Offline what? packages, NuGet.org. You can actually have NuGets from all over the place. So if we go and look at the web application and look at its NuGet packages. These are all the NuGet packages that come with the web application that we've just built? Right, so these are all the ones that are coming from NuGet. But if I go and say all, notice that Maria does not appear. Because it's not a NuGet package. Exactly. It is a class a reference. reference. But if I uploaded it and then brought it back down and it was shared that way, it would become a NuGet package. So if um, we up uploaded it mm -hmm. and I didn't delete it, would it just show up as a NuGet package? That is a great question. If you had, if Maria Live existed up in NuGet, but it also existed locally, who wins? Yes, who, is there some sort of pecking order that comes up? Right, so remember we said where it looks first. Project, oh. system, internet. internet. Okay, so it would look It would look locally, locally first. You so. would override oh. if it matched. Let's say that uh, Maria 1.0 was up on um, NuGet, but you asked for 1.1, and it says, well, there is no 1.1. Locally, and yes. It would crash. It would say, no, I can't resolve that. But here it's saying 1.0, you know, star. You could even say, you know, how, how wide a net do you want to cast? But if it can't get you what you wanted, like, for example, if I said ASP.NET Core Static Files 2.0, that's not a thing. So look what happens. Oh, you get a bang. You get a bang, and it says, no, look, dependency specified, that's not at all what I wanted. It's not possible. So as long as you keep your version numbers straight, things will work themselves out. So but if I said something like Maria 5.0, look what happens. Bang, because it does not exist. Uh, more specifically, it actually tells you exactly what happened. Look at this. I, you asked for five, but you ended up <laughs> with one. <laughs> sorry, we ended up with Maria 1.0. Not nearly as cool as Maria 5. So one of the things that I've noticed here is that there's a version, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So. How come MariaLib has a default version of 1.0? Excellent question. So if we look at project.json for your library, it was given a default version when we made it, and it is version 1.0. So if I were going to be formal about it, if I was going to make my versions mean something, I would decide that major means something and minor means yeah. something and build means something. So like if I broke the contract, I might make Maria 2.0 have a new function that has broken the contract. So versioning matters, and there's a thing called semantic versioning that you should look up. And it's basically the rules for, well, I made a little bit of a change in my library. Is that a major version or a minor version? Okay. All right. So that is kind of a brief overview about how to use class libraries and multi-project solutions. Take a short break and we'll come back and we'll talk about Model View Controller. I'm excited about that one. All right.